When I look back at how I learned jazz, then clearly there are a few things that in hindsight really boosted my playing and took me to the next level. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of those approaches to learning, some of the ways that I worked, and even if I didn't think about them in a strategic or deliberate way when I was learning, if you're trying to learn jazz, I'm pretty sure these five tips will really help you learn faster and more efficiently. And usually that also means that you're gonna have more fun along the way. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. The impact it had on my playing when I went from practicing whenever I felt like it or thought that I had time to working really with a schedule, a routine and working on technique and playing on a daily basis was really huge. I still remember going to one rehearsal after starting to do this for a week and the sea of possibilities that had opened up because I was starting to work on just knowing all the scales and arpeggios and also just playing guitar and making music every day was really a big difference for me. Of course, my teachers had talked about this and told me to practice every day for years and I never really listened to them and it wasn't until I started doing so that I realized how right they were about it. And after that point, getting such a huge boost within one single rehearsal and a few days of practice, there's of course no turning back. And after then, I always worked on playing music and playing scales, if not every day, then at least as often as I possibly could. And this really has to do with the fact that you want to know all the things that you want to play, whether it's improvising or you're learning a guitar part for some song, you really need to know it so well that it just comes out completely without any effort. It has to be completely natural. It has to be like riding a bike. Having even a short daily practice routine will really help you getting started with this. And that was actually also how it was for me. I didn't practice for hours and hours every day when I started doing this. I only had a routine that was like 10, 15 minutes, but I built it from there. And once you get into the habit, then it's also easier to get a longer practice routine and figure out how you can work on things and what fits you and what you should focus on. I have a video on how you can set up a 10 minute practice routine and you can check that out if you're looking for inspiration on this where you can find some of the things I think you should include and of course again you have to think about what fits you but it's a good place to start and from there you can always build. Whatever you practice on your instrument, then the goal is to make music with it. I say it in all the videos. I want you to learn jazz and make music. And shifting your goals to really trying to learn songs and play those songs and whatever you're practicing next to it, try to use that in the songs is actually a very useful way to have achievable goals in your practice routine so that you always feel like you're getting somewhere, you're learning something new and you can make music with it. And that keeps you motivated. That's something that's very useful. Plus of course that you are actually practicing how to use it. So whatever you're working on, it is becoming music. It is becoming a part of what you're playing. And I'm sure you already know that there is a big difference between being able to play a C major seven arpeggio And then also being able to use that in music and play lines like this. So of course there is some work that needs to be done beyond just playing the arpeggio with the metronome. You need to work on actually fitting it into your playing and being able to be creative with it and make some lines that you also think sounds good. So focusing on always playing music and also making sure that you're every day working on playing a real piece of music is something that's gonna keep you motivated and also going to make sure that you're getting something out of all the things that you practiced, that you're not just practicing some empty exercises that doesn't really help you in the long run. Jazz is a genre of music that is about playing with other people. It's not really an art form that lends itself to solo performance. That means that if you're not playing with other people, then there are some essential skills that you're not developing. There are more advantages to playing in a band than that. Because if you're playing with other people, then you're also making sure that the stuff that you're practicing, so the songs, but also other skills, techniques, arpeggios, whatever you're using when you're playing music is being put to use in some real music in the real situation where you can test it when you're playing with other people. Performing music with other people is going to help you deal with whatever happens in the music because we're improvising, so strange things happen, but you still have to keep the music going. And that means that you have to know it a lot better. You have to be really strong about where you are and what is going to happen. And there are also some other things that you're never really gonna work that much on, 
besides when you're actually playing with other people like comping or giving a sort of larger form to your solo. There are also some things that you wouldn't recognize as a problem unless you start playing with other people about how clear you are with where the time is or when you need to be clear to other people. These are things that you need to learn to judge and it also has to do with interaction. Again, something that you're not gonna learn if you're only practicing with a metronome or a backing track. For me personally, but also what I see with most of my students, it's also about staying motivated. It's fun to make music with other people and you're responsible for playing your part and if you don't know what to play and you can't do it, then you're wasting everybody else's time. So that means that you're gonna work harder and you're gonna progress a lot faster. I think for me, one of the things that really made a huge difference when I started playing jazz was that I decided to go with a bass player and play in the streets of Copenhagen. That meant that I was learning a lot of tunes and I was getting a lot of experience and we always had to start a tune and finish it again. And just this whole thing about really playing a piece of music with a beginning and an end all the time really developed a lot of things besides just t teaching me really a ton of tunes also. When you learn music, then you need to get to the point where you know it so well that you can hear it inside and then get it out on the instrument. That's really the goal. That's when it's gonna sound natural and you really know it. One of the most efficient ways to get to that point is really just to start with learning by ear because it's a lot easier to just get something in that way and then also get it out onto the instrument than trying to analyze your way and then hopefully it will eventually be something you hear. And this was true for me as well. I've learned a lot of things and studied a lot of things by ear to become a better musician. And I'm really talking about learning songs, but also really figuring out how to play different songs, jazz standards or whatever I was trying to learn, but also learning solos because you wanna work on vocabulary, you wanna figure out what is going on in the solos that, that you like and try to get that into your playing. And most importantly, for me at least, also learning phrasing and getting to the point where the melodies that I hear inside really sounds like jazz. I think when you're learning songs by ear, so for instance, you're learning a jazz standard, then if you spend the time trying to learn the melody, just listening to it a lot and then trying to figure out how to play it, then it's stuck much deeper in your memory and you can remember it for a lot longer and you're also more flexible with how you play it. And that's really useful. When I was starting to try to learn standards by ear, then first I would learn the melody, try to write it out, and then I would transcribe the bass line and then use those two things to figure out what was going on in the comping because sometimes jazz harmony is not that clear when you're listening to a recording of it. We play a lot of voicings that are not complete and you have to sort of guess what is going on in the context. So this can be quite tricky to get into, but this approach is actually quite easy to get started with. When it comes to learning solos, then that's something that is probably mostly gonna be effective once you start figuring out what is being played, but also in a way that you can actually play along with the recording. So you can really feel how the timing is, how the phrasing is, because I think that's the most important part of learning to play a solo and transcribing solos. At least it was for me. At the same time, you can of course also transcribe lines and then use those. But I think the process of getting those into your ears and into your playing in a natural way is a little bit different than just being able to play it. What I've also found to be really useful when I'm trying to help my students get a better phrasing is to give them not solos because they're long and complicated, but really just give them like bebop themes that are simple, some of the easier harp up things from Sonny Rollins, stuff like that, because when they learn that by ear, which is a lot more repetitive and a lot simpler, then they still really improve their phrasing. And that's also a great place to start if you think a solo is very difficult to get into because it's long and it takes a lot of work. Even if you're trying to learn a style of music like jazz, 
that has sort of very well-defined sound in terms of a melodic language and a harmonic language, you still want to have a personal sound. So you want to develop your taste and really be creative with whatever you want to use. You don't want to sound like you're just playing all the cliches of the genre or following some sort of weird rule book. You work on this by always being creative with what you're playing. So you need to try to compose new material and then use your taste to figure out whether you like it or not. This can really help you in terms of taking your playing in a certain direction and get a certain sound into your solos. And when you work on this, then probably you're gonna be spending a lot of time composing and also some time analyzing lines and some examples of how this works in the solos that you transcribed, how you get that into your own playing, figuring out how to take it from one part of a solo into another chord or try to get it to sit right with the other things that you use in your solos and in that way make it a natural part of how you play and develop your own sound. It's not enough to just spend a lot of time practicing. You also want to be strategic and deliberate about how you spend that time because that's going to be a lot more efficient and that's going to help you progress a lot faster. If you want to evaluate how you practice and think about some of the skills that you need if you want to play jazz, then check out this video where I'm going over the 10 commandments of learning jazz. They're sort of very general, but they're also really gonna help you evaluate whether you're working in the right way or if you're missing something really important that you need to develop in your own playing. 